Okay, hi everybody. This is Atle, um, playing SnowRunner, which is a game that I picked up over the Christmas in the Steam Winter Sale. Got a decent discount rate on it, and I bought the game plus all of the DLCs. So a bundle that had Season 1 and 2, and then there's about three DLCs that I picked up on top of that that weren't included in the seasons. And it's brilliant. I love it. I've got about 50 hours in the game on career mode. Um, if I quickly look, I'm currently in the Russian Federation on career mode. 11% complete of the game. So about 50 hours total so far, but all on that save. Um, but I'm finding career mode a little bit uh, lacking in challenge, and partly because the DLCs give you so many free trucks. Uh, that really there's no progression in the game. So I decided really about 20 hours in that I was going to have a go at hard mode. And then I thought if I'm going to play hard mode why don't I record it. I've never done a recording like this before. I've never tried to do content for YouTube. This is my first ever YouTube video. Um, why don't I record it? And then from 20 hours of gameplay I procrastinated so much about getting the recording software set up and getting everything ready that I did another 30 hours in career mode uh, so there you go I've got a little bit of experience I'm by no means an expert there's a lot of trucks I've not played with I've barely touched anything outside of the Mich Michigan map I've briefly gone into the Alaska and Russian maps but not 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 more than just going in and maybe picking up a, a free truck or two. So hard mode. What is hard mode? It's going to be a challenge. And and the most important thing is that effectively it says, uh, I don't know if you can see where my cursor is, note that you may face an unsolvable situation and may have to restart the whole game. So hard mode is effectively permadeath. And the scenario there is that you could run out of money roll a truck not have the money to recover it not have another truck that we can that can recover it and have no way forward to progress the game so the challenge is so so if you if you mess up the finances you could have a game ending issue effectively permadeath so what are the challenges uh you have to pay for fuel and repairs so that's that's quite a big deal in career mode if you uh, go to your garage or if you go to a fuel station you get fuel and repairs for free um, and that's the bit that probably makes it that you can have permadeath in that you don't have enough money to do to buy fuel or repairs you need to be earning more money than you're spending on fuel and repairs a bit like the real world right uh, you have to pay for your vehicle deployment so you can't just put it in storage in one garage fast travel to another map and deploy it for free so you effectively pay in I guess shipping charges to get your ship your your truck ship get your truck moved to another garage to another zone which makes sense in the real world you wouldn't get your truck teleported for free you have to pay for recovery recovery in career mode is probably the bit I like the least because it makes you lazy. It's just so easy to to collect, load up a truck, deliver some cargo, get to the other end, and deliver, get the reward for the mission, and then just recover back to base, pick up another mission and carry on. So I really don't, and, and probably recovery, I know I could have discipline and just choose not to use it, but recovery is the thing, like if you roll a truck, if you can recover it for free, then why not? Whereas in hard mode, if you have to pay to recover it, you might think more about, firstly, driving more carefully in the first place to reduce the rolls. Secondly, do I drive out there with another truck to recover it? Because that's cheaper than maybe... And I don't know, because I've never played hard mode, but I don't know what the recovery fee is. If it's a flat re recovery fee... Again, as per the real world, it might be cheaper for you to pay to have it recovered than it is to 
spend an hour driving out with another truck that might not have the right equipment on it and so on. So we'll see how that one goes. You have to pay to load cargo automatically. Again, this this is going to be one. It's not it's not as big a deal, depending on what the charge is. I don't know what the charge is, but it's not as big a deal. But it might mean that you put a loading crane on more lorries. But by lorry, I mean truck. I'm a UK guy, and I'm going to use truck and lorry interchangeably. Same as I'm going to do Arctic and semi interchangeably um, you may put a loading crane but not all trucks can take a loading crane so that's another one that's going to be an interesting thing you may end up putting like at a lumber mill you may end up putting a, a crane lorry there just so that you can load without having to pay a fee if the fees are high you can't sell trailers and semis or well, semis are trailers but anyway um, Interesting one. Because you make a lot of money, easy money, and you find lots of trailers littered around the map, and sometimes they've got cargo on that are use that's useful for a mission, and that's free cargo, that's good. But other times it's just a trailer, and you drag it back to the garage or to a, or drag it to a uh, trailer store and sell the trailer and get a bit of cash. You can't do that in hard mode. You, anything you, your trucks and equipment sell for half of its price. So you can't just buy something, try it, don't like it, sell it. If you do that, you're going to lose money. Um, probably means that you will end up selling trucks that you find in the wilderness, but but not selling them on the basis that you can just buy it back later for the same price. If it's something that you think you'll need down the road, you might end up keeping it. Unless you're so strapped for cash that you, you're effectively in a permadeath situation. And you have to sell something to be able to recover. Uh, contests, I've never done the contests. Uh, I think that's time trial things, I've just never done them. I've seen them around the map in campaign mode, career mode. Um, but never done them, don't know much about them other than the fact that you have to do a task within a certain time period. So we'll see. That's not going to affect me too much because I've not done them anyway, but we'll have a look at them. Um, you have to search for facilities for the cargo you need by yourself. That's going to be interesting because you need to remember then. Um, once you've exposed the map, you should be able to still, I hope, click the object in the map and see the cargo that's available. It's just I'm assuming that the task system isn't going to give you quick and easy pointers of where to pick things up you'll have to look around for it yourself and, and maybe remember where something is if it's on a trailer it's not just going to show you that that trailer can do the job i'm assuming again i, I haven't played hard mode so i don't really know what that one means other than the fact that i'm assuming it's just not as obvious where to find stuff you have to search the map a bit more so yeah hard mode um give it a go Put it in slot two. I'm not going to do my normal thing in a game. Normally I delete my other save if I'm starting a new one, but I don't know. Any oh, okay, so you start in the garage. You don't start over in the town. So I guess it skipped the tutorial then. Um, let's open the map. Okay, so the map, yeah, you start here. Normally you would start over in the southwest corner with the truck, second truck by the look of it. And you would be directed through a tutorial to unlock some bits of the map. I wonder if the bridge is still down. Probably. Um, okay, so we start with that truck uh, in the garage. We also... Okay. There's some stuff outside the garage. Still some traders here. Still looks like the truck. The Fleet Star, is it? The truck is still there. Um... And then global map. Because I've got all of the DLCs. Uh, okay, so progression wise, technically I could fast travel to any of the zones. But because I don't have unlimited high end trucks through the DLC campaign mode, I'm assuming I wouldn't do, there wouldn't be much use to doing that unless I know that there's a specific thing I want to go and unlock. Like an upgrade or something. 
I'll stick with Michigan for, for now. And then the other thing I want to check, yeah, okay, so truck storage, I'm just confirming you don't get given the free DLC trucks in hard mode. But I'm assuming you can still, yeah, okay, you can still buy them. So in, in campaign mode, if anybody doesn't know this, in campaign mode, that truck, plus all the other ones that say DLC, would just be in your truck storage as free trucks right from level one. You wouldn't be able to equip all of the upgrades on them because you're not high enough level to have unlocked the good upgrades. So the trucks may not be as useful, but I know I use the Western Star. I call it a tippy truck because it kept falling over, but I know that I've used, I've had access to these trucks in my garage without finding them in the world. Whereas I start with an empty garage, just the one truck the um, Chevy pickup truck. So that's interesting. Uh, this, spoiler alert, this may end up being the first thing we actually buy for ourselves because I find this, although it's quite restricted in the add-ons it can carry, this is an incredibly capable, quite cheap off-roader. But we'll see. And um, we start with $8,850. So out of the store, watch what's this giving me by default with this truck. So upgrade wise, I am obviously level two starting the game. Okay, so I've given you some of the XP that you would have done the got from the tutorial, starting you off at level two, and it's given me the one truck made to start. Yeah, so what are my customization options? Bigger engines, got to find them in the map. Better gearboxes, got to find them in the map. I suspected that. Raised suspension. Tires, I got some options. Highway tires are useless. So I'm going to almost certainly... Let's have a quick look. So I think... I think I'll go straight for these AS2s just because they've got a good rating for mud. So off-road they're better, the AS1s are better, mud the AS2s are better and I think the AS2s are more useful on this map because you're more likely to get stuck in mud. Yeah, so I'm going to use some of my precious starter cash to get myself those tires and I can sell for half okay so half price that would normally give you a thousand dollars so selling the equipment for half price but there's no point keeping them highway tires are useless pretty much in the whole game from my experience having only played 10 percent of it but all of the Michigan uh, maps there's not enough tarmac to justify highway tires tarmac asphalt same thing right so that sold those what else winch ah autonomous scout I don't understand I don't understand why that's unlocked I would have thought that would I seem to remember that being a uh, unless it's an account level unlock but anyway I can't afford to put one on but uh, so probably as soon as I can afford it that'll be one of the things I'll get my diff lock is so I, I don't have a diff lock at the moment. I've got to find that somewhere on the map. Um, I'd like to put that on. I'd like to put a... I'm not going to go wading in this truck because it hasn't got the upgrades to really cope with deep mud. So I'm going to have to be careful where I drive. Should I put that on or not? Nope. I'm going to leave that off for a minute because I'm going to be really careful. The permadeath thing is... is this could be a really short series. Um, the permadeath thing bothers me, so I'm going to try and reserve as cash. I think that's one of the things that permadeath is going to do, is make you conservative with your spend. You're going to have to choose the upgrades, because in campaign mode, you can you can spend all your money down to zero dollars, and there's still no risk, because you can recover for free, you can repair for free, you can refuel for free. The worst thing that can happen in campaign mode is that you roll a truck and have to recover it for free and then drive back to the way you rolled it to do the objective whereas in this 
the worst thing that can happen is that you have to delete the save and start again. So I'm going to be careful with my money. I'll get that. And the autonomous scout winch when we can afford it. Because that saves you having to recover. That's probably the highest priority purchase for me on a scout truck. Right, so let's leave the garage and see what we've got outside. Uh, so, we, so this is currently equipped with um, all-terrain tyres with a bias towards mud. And that's the only change. Okay, so there's some trailers here. Getting close to them will probably give me a little bit of XP. Yeah, okay. Service trailer. And flatbed. Service trailer's going to be handy because you have to pay for repairs. I can use that service trailer for repairs instead. And then this curtain cider. As far as I'm aware... Yeah, there's no XP for discovering a curtain cider. That, that trailer, I think, is just for mission sort of tasks. And then over here we've got an upgrade and I assume that truck is ours for free. Cool. So all wheel drive all wheel drive mode for ah oh, for the fleet star, which is this truck that we just I'm assuming get a bit closer to discover it maybe. There we go. It's discovered. Okay, so that's pretty broken. And again, normally you would just recover that and see what happens. So turn my engine off because we've got save fuel. Let's jump into that other truck. Yeah, it is ours to use then. So jump into the Fleet Star. Show me the damage. Everything's broken. Everything. Interesting. So. So I can use that repair truck for it. Let's do that. I don't know how much it would cost to repair it in the garage. But the repair truck is going to be free. So let's do that. Change over to the Chevy. But I can't drive it there. I'll have to drag it. You can only winch when your engine's running. So we will save fuel by turning the engine off there. I think you can only repair if the trailer is attached to a vehicle. I don't think you can just drag it to the front of the trailer. Yes, we'll spin it a bit. Let's put it in all-wheel drive. So we've got to drag this to the repair trailer, or the repair trailer can meet in the middle. But I don't think we can just drag the nose in. I think we're going to have to drag the, have the truck in. And then connect it. I'm not sure duration of videos. I'm recording everything at the moment and I'll think about whether or not I end up time lapsing or doing anything with this. Because you know, 50 hours of me playing the game in campaign mode, where progress will be a lot faster than I expect it to be on hard mode. Uh, and that 50 hours did about 10% of the game from a concert, from a from the game's tracker perspective. It's not quite close enough. Let's see if that's close enough. Um, no, it's not close enough. Drag the trailer to it a little bit. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's if I literally record everything and, and then try to do YouTube videos of it in, re in normal time, 
without any skips and without any time lapses. And I wanted to aim maybe for half an hour or so. Then there would be hundreds of videos by the time this is finished. So I'll see how that goes. Let's see if, see if anybody actually watches it anyway. Let's see if we can handbrake on. Let's just see if we can just tell that. I've just connected to the wrong thing. Uh, connect it to. Which, that's it. Um, so, like I say, I've never. Uh, we go, rolled it forward too far now. I've never. It's not going well, is it? <laughs> Uh, I've, I've never tried to do this before, so I don't really have any expectations of length of videos. I know the type of videos I like to watch are generally half an hour, 40 minutes. It's a, it's a good time for me. Sometimes I quite like some, some of the content creators I like to watch will do uh, like a four hour, effectively a stream that they've then published online. Turn the engine off, save some juice, change the truck. So we'll see how it goes. I might end up I might end up cutting the certain types of content that I think I won't cut ever, and that's probably gonna be uh, assuming people all the engines are up so I can talk a little bit on the map without worrying about burning fuel. Um on the map, the regional progress, that's the main stuff that you have to do for each map which doesn't unlock progression, but I think it feels like a, a sensible progression to try and do most of the stuff in the regional progress, which are special tasks on cam for sure. And then in every map, there's side task givers that will be in this category that are, yeah, really side quests, side missions and not so worried about doing them on cam. Maybe I'll do some of that stuff off cam just to make a bit of progress. We'll see if anybody even watches these and what the preference is of the audience, if there is an audience. Right, so, repair. I can take some, refu some fuel from the Chevy, but I know I don't want to do that yet because my fuel tank is broken and it'll just leak. So, repair. Uh, so well just repair everything. And then bodywork damage can be repaired in the garage. I don't think bodywork damage has an impact on how well the thing works. So, uh, there, and now we'll take a bit of fuel out of the Chevy. So that's taken half of the Chevy's fuel to put a dribble, effectively, 37 out of 240 litres in this truck. Uh, detach the trailer because I'm just going to leave that repair trailer here. Handy place near the garage. And I will use that rather than pay the garage uh, as long as it lasts. So we'll get this one in the garage, but without refueling it. And see what our options are for this truck. So this is, uh, so it's got a diff lock already. That's engageable already, that's cool. And we just outside got the engageable all wheel drive. So we'll install that, it's no cost. We'll sell the rear wheel drive for 500 because that gives us a little bit of extra cash. Um, no engine upgrades yet. A lot of this stuff is, find it on the map or locked. Find one of them in Alaska, but we don't, I don't use yeah, probably the off-road gearbox is the most useful one. Um, tires. So, so far I haven't unlocked anything. And if I wanted to go for... Well, what I, what I would want eventually for this is these tires. These are generally the off-road UOD 2s. are the ones I feel best suit most trucks so far for general purpose and then mud tires and chains for, for specific scenarios um, 
but at the moment I don't think either of the highway upgrades are worth anything. Stock, winch is all I've got access to, fine. Don't want to put a spare wheel on it, it's locked anyway. Snorkel, again, I will want a snorkel on it, but I'm not going to spend dollars on that just yet. Got the all-wheel drive. Frame add-ons, what can this take? So I expect at some point this might have a loading crane on it. And a flatbed. And then I can use this for my early delivery stuff around this map, but we'll see. A bit worried about taking this out because these tyres are going to get stuck. But we'll, So we'll probably explore a bit of the map next in the scout but what we won't do is retain this and put it in storage because we'll have to pay to get it out so we'll just leave it in the garage for now and on the map select our Chevy and jump to the Chevy okay so we've got we've got a uh, we've got the pickup truck and then we've got a proper truck in the garage Let's go look at the map. Probably come and grab this watchtower in this corner. Because that's fairly close up a path. This Chevy should be able to deal with that, no problem. Um, try and get this watchtower as well. Not, not want to venture up that way just yet. And while we're heading around, we'll grab any tasks that we can. Because again, in the hard mode where you're paying for fuel, you probably want to try and be efficient and do tasks that that compensate comp compensate no complement each other sorry words hard not used to talking while i'm playing this is just something for me to get used to it's one of the things one of the reasons i wanted to do this was it's just an experience and experience is all good this recording's been going now for 27 minutes um, yeah, so we're going to grab that first watchtower. That's the, that's the first objective. I have only got half a tank of fuel. So I might grab some fuel first. There's a gas station. Yeah, so so that, that, that's that's the order of business. Let's grab some fuel so we got a little bit of a comfort zone. Maybe come back down through the farm. I know a bit about the map just because I've played in the campaign mode. So, so we'll go up into this fog of war and get fuel, which is around here somewhere and then we'll come back down through the farm here so let's just roughly do the plot there 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 it's a gas station that's probably it actually yeah so the gas station there and then back uh, that would be to town I think and then this will be farm so we'll go roughly here across here and then into that watchtower. That's roughly the route we're going to do. Okay, let's go. Turn off. Or we'll drive until we need it because of fuel. Because this is a, you know, this is doing a liter a minute. Not too bad for exploration purposes. 38 litres of fuel left because I gave half a tank of my fuel to the Fleet Star. Engage all drive. Try and avoid the deep puddles of pre existing mud. And also try and avoid the worst of the boulders so we don't do engine damage. Because we don't have any race suspension, we don't have any balloon tyres to just coast over the top of this stuff. And I switch to first person. I generally prefer driving if I can in first person. I'm slightly worried about doing this as a YouTube thing because I'm slightly worried about whether it invokes motion sickness for people that are maybe watching. But there's me assuming that anybody will ever watch this. I do love the physics of this. As a driving game, this game has completely captured me. Um, 
I do love how real it feels. There's not as much snow as I expected. I gather I've never done anything from this developer before, and I gather their previous game was called Mud Runner. And from my experience so far, this game could have been called Mud Runner 2 brackets little bit of snow because there's not a lot of snow so far, but we'll see if the later maps that I haven't been to earn the name. But certainly all of the early experiences more Mud Runner than Snow Runner. Handbrake, engine off. This task is to spot trouble, oil tanker missing. So we're going to recover an oil tanker somewhere on the map, bring it back to this spot. And it's stuck in a swamp. If it's stuck in a swamp, we currently do not have a truck that's up to doing that. But we'll grab it anyway, so that we have it if we happen to be in the area of the truck that they're talking about. We don't have to come back and get the task. So fuels, this fuel station, this is something I've never done before, so I don't I'll just, uh, engine off. So if I wanted to refuel here, that would cost me $138 to buy 46 litres of fuel. Um, so I've got $7,350. So I've got a decent amount of fuel. So that's source that. And I've currently got less than half a tank. So that's probably 150. I'm going to guess about 150 for a full tank. Sorry, for a full, for a half tank. So about $300 to fill this tank. Not quite, because I've just noticed it tells you it's three pounds, three pounds, three dollars per liter, and this has an 80 liter capacity. But I'm not going to pay for that because there's a fuel truck here, it's trader, semi, as Americans would say, but I'm going to probably use trader more often, being a Brit. Uh, so I can refuel from this for free. So I've just taken fuel out of that and it didn't cost me anything. Interesting to see if, if the wheel drive is still on. If that has any impact later on, if I need to use that trailer for something, whether it needs to be full for that mission or whether I so I might have to I might have to pay to replace the fuel I've just used. Don't know, not sure how that works. Right. So as per our rough we didn't quite hit the waypoints, so let's just update that. As per our rough plot, let's head to the farm. It's getting a little bit dark. Headlights on this aren't particularly spectacular, but uh, and so yeah, one of the other features of hard mode is you cannot fast travel. You sorry, you cannot tra change time. Normally, if it's getting dark and you don't like it, you can just fast forward time until six a.m. and you can choose to play always daytime if you like. I actually don't mind driving at night in this, especially if I've got a vehicle with decent lights. But I'm not sure how good. Nighttime driving translates as uh, as YouTube content because it's going to be quite dark. We'll see. All right, it's muddy enough to put my all-wheel drive back on. Coming through the farm, I'm pretty sure there are some tasks here based on the farm. Some of them are regional map tasks, but I'm. Um, There's probably, I don't know, no task givers popped up so far. I wonder if that's a hard mode feature. I thought there were some tasks out of here. I wonder if it doesn't show you the tasks unless you discover the, unless you actually like, drive close enough to trigger them. Loading zone. I think it's more unloading. But Cargo, 
I can load consumables. Fine. I attempted to turn right here to go to town, but that's that's what the tu the starter tutorial would have had you do, and I don't really want to do that. Uh, just going to adjust my waypoints a bit because I think this is the, this side lane. I hope this Chevy can do it, but this side lane is how you get to that watchtower, I think. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to go to town. I'm going to stay on plan. Plans are good. I don't know what changes. Well, I've got whether I've got to rebuild the bridge. There's a bridge that you do in campaign mode in this part of the tutorial. So I would need the big truck to tow a big trader around for that. And uh, I don't know how to get the resources on this side of the map, etc. So I'm going to stick to the plan. My lights are on. I mean, yeah, this thing definitely needs better lights. Uh, there's lots of scout trucks in this game. I actually found so far for me all of the exotic stuff that you get, like the can, yeah, can, um, 38 or 48 or something, that you get as as a free truck in the DLCs. It's got mud tires, so it's useful for some things, but it's got such a short fuel tank range is close to useless to me let's just update this path a little bit um, whereas once you get a decent number of upgrades there's all kinds of there's all kinds of scout vehicles in this game it's six wheelers there's, there's tank looking things there's all kinds of things that are interesting tr looking trucks but actually this this old Chevy CK1500 um, when you get the upgrades on it is a pretty capable long range decent vehicle because it's small and it can get through a lot of the rocky gaps some of the scout trucks that I played with on my other save are too big basically to, to get through some parts of the map um, so I intend, I expect, to keep this Chevy long term and just upgrade everything I can on it. Because it's quite stable, of course it can tip over, but it's quite stable, it's quite uh, small, quite manoeuvrable, which I think is, is the definition of a scout. I haven't found, for some maps, I haven't found a better scout in my previous play. So we'll see how this develops. Could do with some better lights. I wonder if it's easier to see in third person. Not really. I can see the watchtower ahead, that's useful. Right, our first watchtower on this save. Engine off, save fuel. Watch your observation. Rehydrate while we're doing the watchtower. So what did that do for us? Uh, not going to carry on down through there. So it's, un it's found an upgrade for us here. That's useful. Let's just see. What so we'll see what that is. Um, and head back to the garage. Roughly that route.
the maneuvering that includes reversing. I do use third person just because you can see backwards. Makes sense, right? And then I'll pop it back in the first person for most of my driving. I don't know if that's annoying as it to watch it from YouTube, sat sat from a cab's perspective. Let's see. Fairly fuel economical. Considering we're doing off road, we're burning up to three litres a minute in the short burst when there's a particularly sticky bit that we're driving through. Um, but yeah, since leave it, since filling up at that oil tank at the gas station, we've only used 11 litres to do this circuit, which isn't bad. appear to be no no that is the track it just doesn't look like a track and I may have got lost a little bit so I need to do sharp right between these two rocks yeah I just it, it from from cabs for you it looked like the rat path was running out but yeah it's these two rocks okay fine I've definitely got lost there because that isn't right. Yeah. Didn't, didn't think that was right. Get back on the path. Nighttime driving for you. First of many mishaps, but that one wasn't too. Probably burn an extra liter of fuel. Three dollars. Not going to break the bank. Right now we're looking for that upgrade. In my previous day, this detour is recommended because the other part of the road is flooded. So you, as a good little boy, follow the detour and it brings you to this upgrade, which is nice of it. Handbrake neutral. I just want to get into the habit of turning the engine off because otherwise I'll be I'll leave a truck sat there burning fuel for no reason and it's all money. So raised suspension again not for this truck. This is available for the GMC. And I think I think the GMC is in the town. If I remember rightly, I sold it as soon as I got it pretty much. Because of all of the fancy um, trucks I had in the DLC bundles for free in my garage but in this playthrough where I don't have lots of fancy DLT trucks that might be one that I keep so that's useful raise suspension for it probably rather have had it for the fleet star but Vegas can't be choosers that's our garage let's just get home engine on break off back into first person let's go Ooh. Slightly tip off a bridge, but that's all right. Little wobble. Still in all wheel drive. 
purpose because fuel economy versus getting stuck is the equation I think that makes the most sense to worry about for this so right here you burn a bit more fuel but you keep momentum so you at least you're moving and when you get back on the precious little bit of ash belt that this game has all wheel drive turned back up again into my garage move to the garage there's no auto repair auto refuel that's going to take any damage anyway this one's saying that it wants 2,500 to repair, but all I'm assuming that's just bodywork repair, so I'm not going to bother with that unless I end up cash rich. So at the moment in the garage I've got two trucks, and I think that's a reasonable place to call it for this episode. So thank you very much if you did watch, and I will be carrying on and recording episode two presently. And hope to see all or some of you in the next one. Thank you.